One of the problems that Christians have, especially those as we're trying to understand and learn the Bible, is how to make the Bible not say what it doesn't say. Here's what I mean. We can read a passage and it says this, and we might assume because we're looking at it from our own vantage point, or we might bring in our own preconceived notions or what we've been taught in the past, and we might bring that into the passage, and the passage might not even be speaking about that. Let me give you an example. Here's a true story. A man was witnessed going into a house. Uh, there was a scream because a person followed that person into the house to see what was going on. The person that followed the man into the house saw the man standing over a dead body with blood coming out of the person's back. The person that was standing over them had a knife in their hand. The person who walked in made the assumption that the person with the knife in the hand stabbed the person. Well, can we glean from that picture that that's what actually happened? It's a possibility. The only problem is that's not what, what we see. We don't know for certainty. Come to find out, the person just simply picked up the knife. The body had been dead and forensics told that the, that the body had been dead for some time and that this person who had just walked in could not have been the person who stabbed the person. Why do I use that as an example? Because when we look at certain scriptures, certain scriptures might cause us to read into something that's not there. For example, I've been bombarded with this particular passage, I don't know, for the last several months, and I've decided, let me go ahead and give some attention to it, because people are trying to make it say what it simply does not say. That is a passage in chapter 12 of Luke. So let's go there. In Luke 12, uh, Peter's asking about a parable that Jesus says. Now, I want to drop down to 45 and 46. He says, but if that servant says to himself, my master's delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and to get drunk, the master of that servant will come on that on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. So this servant is going to be put with the unfaithful servants. And so someone will read this passage. We're going to go back and read the, the, uh, more of this passage to kind of get a better understanding. But people have asked me, isn't this an example of someone who was faithful and now is unfaithful? In other words, someone who was believing and now not believing. This is an example of how a person can lose their salvation. Here's a clear passage. But that's not, that's not what this passage is talking about. Let's go back to it. And let's start in verse 41. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? And Jesus, the Lord said, who then is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time? So what Jesus is asking, he says, who is, who is, who, who, who is a faithful uh, and wise manager? Who is the one? And so he's giving an example of who one is, or, or in this case, who one is not. Let's finish reading. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Well, the faithful servant is the one who will be doing what he's supposed to do when the Lord, or in this case, when his master comes. But he gives an example of someone who is not a faithful servant. He, look what he says in verse 40, 45. But if that servant says to himself, my master's delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. Now, we know the rest of it. He says he's cut to pieces and he will put him with the unfaithful. Where does it say that that particular person who is put with the unfaithful was ever called faithful? He is trying to show the difference between the faithful and the unfaithful. The faithful one is the one who will be found doing what he uh, what he's supposed to do when his master shows up. The unfaithful one is the one who will be found not doing what he's supposed to do when his master shows up. In other words, believers are the ones that are, are faithful, that are doing what they're supposed to do when the Lord arrives. The unfaithful ones are the ones, or the non-believers are the ones who do not do so. Where does it say, and it doesn't say so, that these faithful, or the, these unfaithful, or these unbelievers, if we can use it for us, were ever faithful? It doesn't say so. And so what happens is we want a passage to reach a certain conclusion. So we have a conclusion in mind as we're reading the passage. We can't do that. Nowhere in this passage, nowhere in this passage does it state that the, the, the servant was ever faithful because Jesus is asking the question, 
who then is the faithful. Let's try to figure this out. And he shows a comparison of one that is faithful and one that is not. And so my friends, if when someone uses this passage, one to try to prove that you can lose your salvation, that's not the passage to use because there is no case to be made of a person that was ever faithful and then became unfaithful. But what this really is, is an example of someone trying to make a passage say what it simply doesn't say. Where in this passage, in this story, is the servant ever called faithful? He is not. And so make sure that no matter if, even if it's just this passage or any other passage or any topic, to make the statement um, that you make your conclusion be based off what it says, not what you think it might say. Uh, well, what he's trying to say is this. No, according to the text, what does it say? And also, what does it not say? Amen.